Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. I just received a 20 watt all-in-one laser engraving machine from Gloofy. Now they just sent over three pages of talking points, but before I get to those, I want to give you my take on this machine and also run a project first. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's start off by taking a tour around this all-in-one laser. So if we look inside here, it does come with a honeycomb cutting bed. It is a 400 by 300 millimeter cutting surface. It has a 20 watt module. You can also buy a 10 watt, but uh, I went with the 20 so I can cut a little bit faster here. I do like that it has the protective chain around all of the cabling down here. And for the most part, the cables seem to be out of the way. The uh, air assist tube here sometimes kind of uh, hits the back of the housing, but I think that's okay. It does have limit switches all around for the laser not to go too far whenever it is in operation. Now, as far as accessories go, it comes with a air pump, so you can have the air assist. And that just connects back here to the back of the box. Now, it did come with an uh, exhaust vent tube, but I've installed my own over here to have uh, a little bit stronger of a fan, and that seems to be working well. Uh, one of the talking points we'll get into here in a little while is that this company includes a filter for their exhaust, and so we'll look at that here in just a moment. As far as accessories are concerned, it has just a few tools you can adjust various things with and it has a power adapter here, and it did come with a, I think it's a four foot USB cable over here. As far as operation goes, you hold down this button to turn it on, and this is the emergency stop, so if it is pushed, you have to twist it to pop it loose. Okay, so this laser does take safety pretty serious. Once that is clicked, you have to turn the machine on and off before it will uh, turn back off that alarm. Uh, okay, so as far as operation goes, if I press this once, the machine will come on. The computer will pick that up in just a moment. And it's got a light bar so you can see your work on both the front and the back here. So that is nice to have. Uh, it does have, I guess, reed switches up here, so it will not let the machine operate as soon as that is closed, which is good. Now the glass up or the plastic up here is uh, protective, so you don't have to wear your glasses whenever you have uh, this machine running. Now, if I want to auto home this, I can double tap here, and it will auto home. I do find it a bit odd that this machine auto homes here at the front. Then you have to push this back out of the way in order to use the machine. So it's just a bit strange. All right, uh, now whenever I got this machine, everything worked except for the laser had no output and I had to reach up under here and reseat this uh, cable right up under here. And after that, everything worked just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a quick project before we start talking about this machine. I'm going to run this. It's a simple light switch cover that I am toying around with. So it just covers a light switch. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I want to do is load up some material. I have some 8th inch Baltic birch plywood. So I got that loaded up here. Now I can move this over and you can see that it has a little cross beam down there to uh, show you where this is going to start working at. So let's go ahead and move over to the computer real quick. I have my light switch cover loaded up here in Lightburn. Now there is an option to add custom macros for autofocus and focus up, focus down, as you can see over here. Whenever the laser first starts up, it will be wherever you left it, which may not be in the correct spot. So if you look, there is actually a limit switch right up here that needs to be triggered. Uh, before we autofocus this. So let's go ahead and click on the laser autofocus up and it will bring that all the way up to the top until it hits that limit switch. It's actually got a thumb screw which triggers that which is kind of fun. All right and now if I press the autofocus button it's going to drop this laser head down until it touches that plate and then it will move it up a time and then back down until it has the focus correct. Now that I have the autofocus done, let's run a frame to see if it's going to be cut within our material space. 
Looks pretty good. I'm gonna close the lid and we'll press start on our project. I'm also gonna turn my exhaust fan on. It's currently engraving the logo here at the top. Once it begins cutting out, we'll be able to see a lot more of the smoke leaving this enclosure. But it is nice to have the protective piece on the laser and also this protective plastic up top so you won't have any issues with seeing the actual laser light. There's an example of some of the smoke leaving the machine. The cutting process has now begun. Cutting through this eighth inch plywood is actually pretty quick for this machine. It's taking care of this nicely. You can see a lot more of that smoke leaving the machine as it's going out towards that filter. I do not detect any of that smoke here in my room. The job just finished up. Now I completely forgot that I did not turn on my air assist whatsoever, but it seemed like the job did complete okay here. Let's open this up. Sometimes a little bit of extra smoke will come out of here whenever you lift this up. Let's see if it does. Maybe a little bit. All right, definitely seem to cut through that eighth inch quite nicely. Very clean. I like it. Now I just need some screws to hold that in place. All right, so that is a basic job here on the 20 watt Gloofy. And it's pretty straightforward, I have to say. Now, before I jump into the talking points that the company sent over, I want to give you my personal opinion on this laser. So first of all, it was shipped and packaged well. There was plenty of packing foam in this machine and all of the different components that come with it were also tucked up nicely and everything arrived safe. Now the user manual that was sent with my version was very vague. It basically showed you how to set up the exhaust pipe and then it stepped right on into setting up light burn and doing things on the computer. I have since seen the updated version and it has a whole lot more information on how to set up the laser. So. Um, definitely, I, I imagine they will ship out that better manual or you can at least see it online. I'll try to have a link to that down below so you can check that out. Uh, so yes, the setup of the laser was not too bad, even though the instructions were kind of vague. The main thing I figured out was that you have to put the honeycomb cutting base in the machine uh, bottom before you put the laser module on or else you're going to be taking that back off because it doesn't quite fit in there. One thing that you have to also keep in mind is that the thumb screw on the laser module is actually going to be the thing that triggers the limit switch. So you have to make sure you put that on the upper uh, right hand corner of the laser module. Now I ran into one issue and that was that everything worked on the machine except for no output on the laser and I had a couple cables that were loose from shipping. So, or I bumped them, one or the other, I'm not sure. Um, once I connected that, everything has worked fine afterward. I had one small issue with light burn. Let's say I push the move left or move right button. The machine would never end the task. So it'd move over and stop. And so I'd have to press the stop button on light burn and then move again. But that also seems to have fixed itself in the past uh, update. So hopefully you won't have that issue either. Now that you've seen my take on this laser, let's go over some of the manufacturer's points here. First of all is safety. The laser module itself has three different fire sensors. I won't be testing that out, but we can test out the emergency stop and the lid safety. So let me go ahead and refocus this. I'll push play on this job again, and we will open the lid, see if it stops the job, and then press the button to uh, emergency stop and see if that works. I've got my safety goggles. I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid and see if that stops the output of the laser. Yep, there we go. We close it again. All right, it seems to have stopped, and that's what we want. The laser is working once again. I'm gonna push the emergency stop button. All right, that has stopped the laser. All right, to undo that, I twist it, let it pop out like that, and now it's good again. 
The next thing to check out is the air purification system. If you look right down in here, you can see there is a filter. If I pull this off, we can take a look at it. Now the fan is running down in there. I've also got my fan going outside, but here is the filter. It seems to have charcoal bits in here and uh, you can kind of see them floating around. But then it's got a pleated filter back here as well and it makes a decent seal against the laser. And that's supposed to both protect your lungs but also protect the fan from particles hitting it. And um, that just simply slides in there in front of that fan. Just like that. Next up is the laser cross down here, which is supposed to show you exactly where the laser is going to start engraving or cutting. And so what I'm gonna do is place a pin mark here. Let's just do it right about here. And then let's say we move the laser with that little cross right on top of that. And then I've got a file loaded up that is going to be a little circle colored in right where that uh, corner is. And so let's see if that's going to be accurate with that cross. All right, let's see what happened. All right, so it looks like my mark was here and that is where the laser finished, but it moved up and over to this spot right here. So there's probably some calculation you can do to find that exact spot and you'll know where this laser is going to start working. Next up, I've kind of already touched on, but it's the autofocus. So you don't actually go in here and manually adjust the focus. It's got this little peg right here, which will sense the wood or whatever material you have and adjust the height. So let's go ahead and show that one more time here. I set up a macro in Lightburn. Oh wait, here's that issue I was talking about before. The job is still running. You have to push stop for it to work. Strange, don't know why. But up here, I've already got this autofocus set up and it will read the material and set it up for me at the right height. Now, if I have to get some material in there that is too tall, I can go over here, my other macro, which is focus up. And that's going to bring that whole laser head up till it hits that thumb screw turns it on just like that. So that's how the autofocus works on the Z-axis. Next, let's talk about the price point and convenience of this all enclosed unit here. A lot of your laser engravers, you have to buy the laser itself, then the enclosure, the air assist, and the honeycomb all as separate items, and it adds up pretty quick, oftentimes well over $1,000. This machine with a 20 watt laser is $1,000, and it has all those things included with this machine. So it's built in, the case is all together, the laser doesn't uh, come out of here, so that's uh, convenient. The honeycomb comes with this, and so does the air assist. So basically, one box, one product, you're done. Um, that makes it very convenient. So um, a lot of those uh, lasers where you buy things separate, you're looking at $1,500 easy. So with this, at $1,000, it's a pretty good deal. I recommend the 20 watt because it is gonna cut things a lot faster than the 10 watt. Once you're done with the machine, you hold down the power button for about three seconds and it will shut everything down. It's pretty easy. The mission statement for the Gloofy lasers is enclosed lasers for all DIY engravers. And I would say that's a pretty good mission statement. This laser is usable right out of the box, works with light burn, no problem. And uh, it's pretty easy and seems to cut accurately. So. Definitely check out the links to this laser in the description down below. I'm Seth with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.